everybody knows our electronic systems are shrinking, but some things, well, they just don't shrink very well. Like, did you ever put that favorite sweater of yours in the dryer? I mean, what comes out is cute and all, but unfortunately, just is no longer your sweater. You have to give it to your kid or put it on your dog or something. Power supplies are like that. If we shrink them down, they don't seem to work quite as well. I mean, if the goal is still to power our system and not just look cute. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. When you're designing a power supply for your ever-shrinking system, you may need some help from some power supply experts. And looky here, we've got just the expert for you. Suhil Danani from Maxim Integrated is here to help us conquer our power supply woes. Before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about Maxim Integrated's high-efficiency power solutions. Hi, Zuel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Amelia. Good to be here. So let's talk about big system-level trends in industrial products. What kind of trends are you seeing, and how do you see it impacting industrial power strategy? So we look at multiple market segments when we look at industrial power, and what we find across the board is that products are shrinking. They're getting smaller in size, but they're incorporating increasing functionality. Sure. Now, in some cases, this is obvious, like servers for the cloud, because you have to accommodate increasing the amount of searches and more and more internet access. But this is also happening in places like factory automation and healthcare. Hmm. Factory automation, where local control is basically supplanting the distributed control, and in healthcare, where newer handheld systems are now replacing desktop machines. Makes sense. Let me give you an example of some of these systems that are getting smaller. These are some of the non-obvious systems, and I've picked a couple from industrial automation domain. Okay. Now, you know that factories are increasingly full of sensors, and these sensors are shrinking at a rapid pace. But what might surprise you is some of the size of these newer sensors. Okay. So I'm showing you here a magnetic proximity sensor, which is about the size of a safety pin. Wow. All right. All right. And obviously, the ICs have to shrink as well to accommodate this kind of shrinking. Absolutely. And on the right here, I'm showing you a micro PLC technology demonstration platform that Maxim has created. If you think about it, these PLCs would take about a rack-based system in the olden days. Right. They've gotten smaller, they can fit on a tabletop, and now they can actually fit in your hand. So this little PLC, we believe, is one of the smallest PLCs out there, and it's a full form feature PLC. Cool. So the ICs, like I said, must evolve to support these form factors, and by that I mean the ICs have to integrate more functions and also have to operate more cooler. Right, of course. So that you can get rid of the heat which mm -hmm. in these systems. So, from what I understand, Maxim has a portfolio of industrial power parts. Mm -hmm. Where in the system are your power parts being used? Okay, so to answer that question, let's start with a very generic industrial power architecture. So, this is a very general system block diagram, but it lets me show you where Maxim products can play. Perfect. Okay, so many industrial systems, you will start with AC power, and then that is converted into either a 12 volt or a 24 volt or a 48 volt DC backplane. Okay. Now everything is gonna be powered out of this backplane. So what we do is we provide the technology that can take that 12, 24, 48 volt and buck it down to the voltages that the microprocessors and the other ICs need, like 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 1.2, etc. Okay. Now we do this via what we call the buck regulators or we can do this using modules. Okay. Modules are complete power subsystems on a single chip, and I'll show you that later on. Also, we understand that many times people need isolated power. They want to use magnetic isolation to protect the components downstream. Sure. So for that, we have built a portfolio of products that use a very unique no-opto technology, which basically cuts down the size of the isolated power subsystems. Okay. And beyond that, we understand that in these rugged environments, people incorporate a lot of protection mm -hmm. into their subsystem. Now, this is protection from over voltage or current. And what we have done is created a portfolio of protection ICs 
which can be sprinkled all over this system block diagram to protect a particular component. Okay. So that's kind of where Maxim's power portfolio plays. Let me actually go back and show you at the top level the four different aspects of our power portfolio. Great. So at the very top, we have what we call high voltage bucks and based on them, the modules. The high voltage buck are buck regulators that feature about 90% power conversion efficiency and also integrate a lot of discrete components so as to give you the smallest form factor. Okay. Now based on this, we have also come out with modules. Modules are easily the way to create the smallest possible power subsystem because all the components are integrated in. We also have a very unique portfolio of integrated protection ICs so that you can build a robust and a guaranteed protection without any guesswork, which is what happens if you use a discrete implementation. Yeah. And then finally, we have the, for the isolated power supply, if you were to do that, we offer a line of flyback and ISO box that I'll show you later on that can help you implement the isolation without the need for optocouplers. And the reason we do that is primarily to allow for a smaller form factor. Okay. So a lot of vendors have DC power products. How is Maxim different or what areas do you differentiate in? Good question. So let's start with the HV Bux portfolio. Okay. Now, one of the key areas we strive to differentiate is in power conversion efficiency. This is normally a function of the load current and of the input voltage. Let's right. say you have a higher input voltage, and if you're using a lower percentage of the rated load current, this can have a detrimental impact in your power efficiency. Sure. So Maxim HV Buck portfolio is unique in the sense that for a broad range of load currents and for different levels of VIN, the power conversion efficiency is either within the 90% range or close to the 90% range. Cool, okay. Now let me show you why we work so hard to improve our conversion efficiency. Okay. Even by a few percentage points because what happens is the higher conversion efficiency directly impacts the heat dissipated by the IC. So here's a picture of a synchronous maxim buck regulator on the right versus a non-synchronous regulator on the left. And as you can see visually from the results of a thermal scan, Synchronous operation, like the way Maxim does it, leads to higher conversion efficiency that results in lower, in this case, by 30 degrees Celsius. Absolutely. Heat profile. So low heat dissipation, like we said, as systems are getting smaller, this is very, very important because in almost all the industrial system, they're all convection cool. There'll be no fans in this system. So how exactly do you enable the smaller size trend that you were talking about? So another thing our HV Bucks portfolio does is also integrates the high side and the low side FETs as well as the different resistors that are required by the other solutions. Okay. So the result is that the complete power subsystem implementation is very small. In this case, as you can see, about the size of a penny, even including the external inductor. Nice. So here's the schematic, the circuit that I just showed you with the little penny. Yeah. This is the schematic representation of that same circuit. So you can see what are the different components that were in that little penny size circuit. And it is basically the buck regulator, which itself is a very small package, a four by four package. And along with that, an inductor and a few resistors. So that's pretty much what the entire circuit for implementing power looks like. Very cool. All right. So... What are some of the newest trends that you're seeing specifically within Power IC world? So what we see in the Power IC is what I would call progressive integration. We started with a simple controller with everything else discrete. Then we went to a synchronous controller. Uh -huh. Nowadays, it's synchronous controllers with built-in integrated FETs. And the next thing what people are looking at is a complete power module on a chip. Okay. As you can see from the outline in this thing of the board, the white line enumerates the complete solution size. So you can see the white line reducing as we progress towards a power module. Right. And as more and more functions are integrated within the chip package, the solution size decreases rapidly. So today, one of the big things that we are seeing is increasing adoption of power modules that offer the smallest possible solution size. Here's an example of some of Maxim's power modules and their exact dimensions. And you can see this is a 9 by 15 and a 10 by 6. These power modules can enable the absolute lowest form factor for a power subsystem. Very cool. 
and the package height, if you notice in this, is very, very small. It's 2.8 millimeters, which is a very important attribute for the next generation of these power modules because it enables us to use them in mezzanine card applications. Okay. Where the height clearance is very, very important. Sure. Okay, so what about some of the other products that get impacted as industrial and medical systems shrink. Tell me about some products that we wouldn't normally think of. Well, one thing you find on all industrial and medical systems in general is protection. You have to protect these systems against overvoltage, overcurrent, reverse polarity, reverse current short circuit, and other things. Sure. So traditionally what happens is the designer will use discrete components that they have been using for a while. This could be resistors, FETs, short key diodes. It's a very cumbersome process, mm -hmm. and it, it takes up a lot of valuable board space. Yeah. So as these systems shrink, one of the things we are finding is people are moving more and more towards protection devices in an IC format rather than using various discrete cobbled up together. Gotcha. We have a range of high voltage protection ICs, which can actually integrate all the necessary circuits for robust protection against such faults. So you will see that these ICs have integrated NFETs and PFETs. They will have precision current sensing and programmable under voltage and over voltage thresholds, as well as programmable current limits. Compared to the conventional discretes, these protection ICs are more robust because they have everything integrated inside of a chip. Okay. They can monitor the die temperature and they are very, very reliable. They also, very importantly, need very less space because right. they require fewer discrete components in case none and are much easier and faster to design with. All right, so finally, tell me more about this no optocoupler business. <laughs> well, if you look at any isolated power supply, they will generally have a transformer. Right. And this is in the forward power path, and they will have optical isolators in the feedback path because you have to sense the voltage or the current on the secondary of the transformer and feed it back to the primary where the regulation is going on. Yeah. Now, this feedback path doesn't feel like a lot, but it's actually fairly large in terms of board space. So let me show you what do I mean by board space. In an isolated power supply design, the, what you're seeing here in a square box is the actual size of the feedback circuitry. Okay. Which is also, I'm showing the schematic of that, so you can see what's involved with this. Now what we, Maxim, are trying to do is we are building products that can get rid of this feedback path completely. Nice. What happens is you don't need for any feedback come from the secondary side because we are sensing everything on the primary side of the transformer. Gotcha. Okay. So these are the two class of products that we have to do no optocoupler base isolated power. Okay. The first one is a classic ISO buck where we are basically using a product to sense the voltage on the primary side and do good enough regulation. This gives you about a 10% regulation on the voltage. Okay. On the right, what you're seeing is a no opto flyback. Now, this is Maxim's patented technology, which uses, again, sensing the voltage on the primary side to give you very, very good 5% regulation of voltage on the secondary side. In both these cases, the entire feedback circuitry has been eliminated. All right, Suhail, will you recap your main points, if you don't mind? Right, so our basic premise is, as systems shrink, the power subsystem of the design must not only occupy less space, but also allow for a relatively cooler operation. So that rugged fanless designs, which are very important for industrial, medical, and other applications can be developed. So our power portfolio is primarily designed to eliminate or reduce the number of discrete logic that you need around it, and to work at a very high efficiency level so that the entire power subsystem runs cooler. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link there, did you? There you can find out more information about Maxim Integrated's high efficiency power solutions. For Chalk Talk, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, check out our on-demand section on eejournal.com or head on over to YouTube, keyword eejournal.